This is Ubuntu 23.10 and it's a very unique and interesting update. But why is it interesting? You see, visually and largely feature-wise, it is the desktop environment that makes a difference rather than the operating system on the surface level. If you look into most of the popular Linux distros, they almost look the same only if you go for the same desktop environment. But whenever you change that factor, it changes. But now I feel like Ubuntu is starting to have its own character and identity. Other than just the orange themed GNOME that Ubuntu ships. Don't get me wrong, it's not like remotely different and alien from the traditional GNOME experience. But there are subtle additions. First we have the tiling assistant extension added out of the box. It's a small feature that enables you to have windows in an organized fashion. Along with the side snapping that already exists, there are additional corner snaps that lets you resize windows to one fourth or quarter of your screen. The other windows are shown as an option to snap to. You can either accept their option or reject them by clicking on the currently active app. It's not butter smooth right now, but yeah, it's a new feature. And it's not just corner snapping, you can split apps along the length of your screen by holding the window for a moment after hitting the top bar of the screen. This, however, doesn't mean that you lose the maximizing option. There's a reasonable hold time to get the split view or if you leave it quick enough, you can maximize the window. But what's even more interesting is the all new app center. It's blazing fast since it is coded on Flutter. And since we're talking about Flutter, let me introduce you to Luke's, a beautiful feature rich note taking app completely coded on Flutter by me. Luke's lets you take rich notes and enables you to do a large range of customizations on the text according to your need. It also enables you to make a to-do list which you can mark individually when your job is done. There's a dedicated settings page where you can customize the animation and blur levels. What makes Luke's different is its custom theme file that lets you define every nook and corner of the app. As of now, you get four predefined themes, but more options will be added soon with a ton of AI features like summarization, image to text and more. It marks my debut in mobile app development and I would love it if you could just check it out and provide me a completely honest review on Play Store. You can get it from the link in the description or from the i button above for free. Well, back to the app center. It feels far more snappy than the previous version, pages load fast and there's a very minimal look which further attracts me. There are side tabs which separate apps into groups if one doesn't have any idea for which app to go for, he can just look up for one from the side tab itself by navigating into the appropriate category. The search bar on the top remains visible and when you search you can set a number of filters according to your requirements like by default you get snap packages shown and if you want Debian packages you can select it from here. However, it resets to default when you reopen the app. I hope Ubuntu adds the feature such that the app customization data is retained after it is closed. However, I don't think the search is very optimized or well optimized because when I search for OBS, there are a ton of different apps which show up before OBS, but obviously it is understood that I'm searching for the recording or the streaming software. But this app doesn't feel as fast as a Flutter app should be. The animation FPS are quite low compared to other apps like Nautilus, which feel so very smooth. You also lose the GNOME's vision of unified app interface which just flows and adapts very well to small screens, making it a good approach for mobile devices. App Center doesn't have the ability to do so. It does, but that is just limited to the grid view. Well, I guess it will receive more updates since you know Flutter is mostly used for mobile interfaces and it's a major move by Ubuntu. It also handles other stuff the App Center should be handling like installing or uninstalling apps and even updating apps. But it doesn't have much information on the app like release notes or app reviews. But I guess they will also be added later. And this app is in alpha. Considering that, it's already good enough. Next, there is the all new firmware updater tool which also uses Flutter. Again, smooth and blazing fast. I love that Flutter apps are becoming the new default now in this OS. It just elevates the user experience by a great extent. Just look how responsive it is. This, however, is just the UI. The background work is still done by its trusty old counterpart. 
Next, let's talk about surface level changes like the GNOME 45, which again elevates the user experience. I have covered this in two different videos, one with stellar animations and visuals, while the other in a bit slower format. So suit yourself as per your requirement. But here's a quick overview of what you can expect. First, you will notice this subtle change in the desktop with the all new pill shaped switcher, which lets you know which workspace you are currently using. You can access the GNOME quick settings with the Super Plus S button and even navigate using just the keyboard buttons. You also get the option to change your keyboard backlight from the quick settings. Background apps feature lets you open the app running in the background, but another addition is the much needed visual feedback which shows a loading icon when the running app is closed. However, I think it shows the loading for a few seconds instead of being mapped to the app closing time, so it stops midway and then it disappears. Background apps feature did not work for me in any way, I could not see Amberall in the quick settings, although I'm pretty sure it was playing music in the background. GNOME also feels more smooth since there are core level changes in Mutter, GNOME's window manager, along with the mouse pointer getting its own thread. Nautilus has a more defined sidebar view and it feels a lot faster with some core level updates. Search option has an all new search everywhere which lets Nautilus search for the file everywhere in the system. And search is also blazing fast right now. Settings has similar visual change with the sidebar and inside there are some more changes like the all new privacy page and the sharing page. An interesting update in the about page is the new system details button which reduces clutter in the main page and shows technical information as a small dialog when the button is pressed. They also provide a copy button which copies the data from the page and lets you paste it as an organized format. To close the dialog you can use the shortcut escape which also works with most of the dialog pages inside settings. Actually settings now has the option to navigate completely using your keyboard. But you do miss out some of the brand new gnome apps like the loop image viewer or the snapshot app replacing cheese but that's not a problem since you have old apps for support. I don't expect them to be around soon since GNOME console has not yet been implemented in Ubuntu and it still uses the GNOME terminal. This however creates a problem since you now have three different forms of UI which is GTK3, GTK4 and then Flutter interface. Flutter uses the Yaru theme as I was saying in their official GitHub code and there are also Flutter packages which you can implement in your app and it's available in pub.dev. Anyway, let's go back to customization, which won't work in Unity in all three of these. Although the JTK4 problem is fixed up to some extent with the all new customizable themes which also work for JTK4. But changing the dark mode from the settings app works pretty well and reflects across all the apps. Finally, there's a kernel update too, the kernel 6.5 which lets you get support for the latest hardware and a number of performance improvements. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Do like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.